new and exciting team-only indoor World Archery Series Finals. I'm Karen Bashir and I'm here to take you through the recurve finals. We've got two teams shooting remotely from ranges in the USA and France all going for the prize pot which is a split of 5,000 Swiss francs. We've got a lot to unwrap but uh, joining me as ever it's uh, one of the architects of this tournament in fact uh, Chris Wells from World Archery. Chris uh, you mentioned uh, right at the top that uh, the 12 pointer was going to be a riskier challenge for the recurve archers compared to the compound archers and we've seen it used we've seen it hit and we've seen it missed uh, but not as much as you predicted are we going to see it in the finals uh, the, the, all the teams so far have really kind of sat back shot the ten ring and, and, and let the match come to them and, and it kind of cost some of those those early uh, competitors points stolen here and there but the problem is that the the, the the, the 12 ring is only 15 millimeters in diameter. The 10 ring for Rika Archer is, is 40 millimeters, four centimeters in diameter. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a small target to hit, and, and there's, a, there's a, a big risk if you miss that you're going to get an 8 or a 7, and that can really affect the scoreline as well. I don't know whether we'll see anything more. I'd like to see some boldness. Jack Williams tried to be bold in, in their semi final. Let's, uh, yeah, let's hope he tries it again in this final. Yeah, using a fatter arrow as well. So uh, maybe uh, that's a bit of a tactical play from uh, the team from the USA. Uh, one other question. I mean, this is a, a new innovation from, from World Archery, uh, developing this series uh, indoors and remotely uh, for these strange times. Um, and you've muted about perhaps adding a few more bonus points uh, or making a few more bonus points available through the individual matches. Is that something that we're going to see in the future? I was just musing about the rules we should have done, obviously, you know, in this in this pandemic times, we tried to come up with something interesting, something different, not knowing if we were going to have a, a, a standard indoor archery world series final, which, which we couldn't. So we're sort of doing something different with the teams, which are normally awarded just on, on the points they accrue uh, over the circuit. So it's been really good to, to try something different, try... Um, you know, try a format that's a bit, a bit strategic, a bit, a bit random actually, a, a little bit um, uh, adding in so, some, yeah, so, some variance in, into the game uh, and a longer game. So it's been cool to see. Who knows if we'll ever get to do it again? Uh, but it's been fun, and you know, maybe we could have had some different rules, but it, but it's worked out so far, I think. Yeah, well, the archers certainly seem to enjoy it from the feedback we've been getting. Uh, let's take a little bit of a closer look at those rules uh, for this new competition. Uh, two teams of three will go up against each other. But first off, they'll face each other in individual matches, three of them. And that's where the bonus points are available. If you win a match, you get one bonus point. If a match is tied, both teams score a bonus point. And those bonus points are added to the starting score for the all important team match which goes back to our usual four end system a cumulative score for this match and the winner of this final will obviously take this year's title all our matches today are taking place over the standard 18 meter distance for indoor archery and all of them consist of four ends of three arrows which is 12 in total i got it right this time it's cumulative score that matches total score and um, uh, There'll be, there'll be no ties in the individual, or no tie break in the individual events. Ties are permitted, but there's no ties in the team match at the end. Yeah, and this is the target we're using, the uh, triple spot, uh, but in the triangular formation. And uh, as normal, the archers will be going for a four centimeter diameter ring in the middle, the 10 ring. Uh, but as we've alluded to, it's back. The 12 spot is back uh, and it's right there, 15 millimetres wide. The archers must declare their intention to shoot it prior to drawing their bows and it can only be used once per end. So it's a very different format uh, that we're going to use through this tournament and uh, this is the final. Uh, so it's about time we go and meet the teams. Uh, I think the sun is still up in California. Hi, Team Lancaster, are you ready to go? Yes. Yep. They're all good to go. Ollie, you stay just there and let's go and meet your opponents uh, there in France. Uh, how are you doing? Are you ready, the Golden Arrow? Yes, we're ready. Well, uh, look, uh, let's bring you all into shot and hand you over to our ringmaster, Chris Wells. You all know what's going on now. You've all had a try at this already in this final. 
And um, we're going to go with the highest seeded team starting first in each of the individual matches, and that is Lancaster as top seed. Uh, you've told us that you're not changing the orders that you had in the semi final, so it's uh, Brady kicking off for Lancaster and Toma kicking off for the Golden Arrow. You guys can go and get ready when you're on the line. We'll come to you and we'll come to Brady first to, to kick us off. Good luck, guys. Yeah, brilliant stuff. Uh, well, as you said, Chris, uh, it's Brady Ellison against uh, Toma Shirai. Let's have a look at the full lineup of the matches we've got coming up. Uh, the three individuals, uh, Ellison, Cheryl, followed by Colfold against Barbala, and then Williams against Jacquet. Uh, the bonus points will be added up uh, for the all-important team match. This is the final. It's uh, Lancaster against the Golden Arrow. Uh, a brilliant lineup. Uh, any predictions at this stage, or is it just too difficult to call? Now, we've just seen the 12 ring come into play on the last arrow of each match uh, and the final as well, but it was the Golden Arrow who, who, who pulled it out of the bag with a 12 on the last shot in their semi-final to draw things level with the Netherlands and then, oh, no, I'm completely wrong. It was the Netherlands that did that. But it was, it was, it was Thomas Chirul who delivered the 10 in the shoot-off, a perfect arrow, almost on the spider to, to take that win. Fantastic shot and a really tense ending to that semi. I'd like to see someone take command of the match a bit earlier um, and, you know, to dictate the pace of things a little bit more. I mean, yeah, of course, there is the risk that if you miss, you get an eight. But if you aim it strategically, it's really not that different. You, you're more likely to catch a nine. You're not losing that many points. Uh, I, I think some risk taking uh, would, would be nice to see in this one. Yeah, definitely would be. Uh, well, uh, Arc System, the French team, won the compound event yesterday. Uh, can the Golden Arrow uh, take it all for France this weekend? It looks like we're ready to go. It's time for match number one. Well, here we are in Chula Vista, California, and there is Brady Ellison to get this final underway. Shiro. First arrow. Just dropping into the nine, but a good sighter. Good arrows from Brady Ellison to start this final and the first match of this final game. Thomas Sherrodo was, was very, very good in his semi two. <coughs> wow, well, Ellison has raised his hand. Is he going for the 12 straight away here? Looks like it. Right, well, he's got the uh, left-right aiming correct, but that's a bit too low, and that's a 26. So Shiro can take the lead here just by going through his normal process and aiming for the normal place. That's just what he does. So a provisional 29 uh, for the Golden Arrow here. And an interesting ploy from Brady Ellison. Uh, is he lining up that 12 ring, perhaps thinking ahead to the finals, Chris, and to the team match? Well, I think he shot two excellent arrows with his first two. They would have both hit if they were aimed at the white spot, probably, uh, given how close they were to the spider. Feeling confident, we've called for him to be told. Why not? He already had that that you know, tentative one point advantage because Sherrill dropped to nine. Yeah, he's three points down now. He's in a bit of a position. Arrow to go low if you aim for the twelve, though. He didn't look particularly comfortable when when he, when he released it. He just wasn't wasn't quite settled. So a good gamble, but but not settled enough to 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 make the most of it. 
And now has it has it kind of forced his hand because he's missed it and dropped into the, the 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 six? Is it is it forced him out into having to shoot it again in this match? Right, he might as well. There's there's no there's no risk not to now. There's only a single bonus point on offer, which is good. We'll get to see a few attempts and see you know how the world number one, the reigning world champion, can do on on that little white dot for the rest of this one. Yeah, well, it looks like uh, they're ready to go. It's time for end number two. Straight away, Brady Ellison has called it, and he's going to shoot the 12 spot, or shoot for the 12 spot, with his very first arrow. <laughs> Close up, but not quite the ticket there. That looks like it will be a 7 no for him. Solid from Thomas Chirot. Bit of a no-nonsense approach to things uh, from the Frenchman. And this is what I talked about earlier with, with the aiming, you know, and how Rika has used yeah. the circles and the circle of their sight to aim. And that's quite a, a natural part of the process. You see, Brady's hitting the dead center when he aims at the ten ring. But there's something not quite settled. He hasn't quite got his, his plan <coughs> down that 12 because they're dropping too low. As Chiro also drops low, a nine in that one. Yeah, as you said, Chris, aiming to the centre is a natural process for Brady Ellison at the moment. He's hitting the centre when he's aiming for it. That is only a 27 though because of the failed attempt to go for the 12. And that's another 29 for me for Thomas Shiro. He's uh, already built up a five point lead subject to confirmation from our scoring confirmation in uh, Lausanne uh, but for me it's 58 plays 53 so uh, Chris you talked about arrows are yeah. on the bottom of faces and on the top they're, they're a great group they're just dropping too low so he hasn't quite got his aiming point down I wonder if he's moving up the face or, or you know he's, he's just floating a bit it's funny you know I said he's the reigning world champion and I remember the quote he gave after after that, um, after that World Championship match two years ago now, it, it was finished in a shoot-off um, against Cairo Anuar Mohamed of Malaysia. Uh, and Brady was hitting in a certain place, and he, and he chose where to aim that, that, um, that, that shoot-off arrow high in the 10. He said he aimed high, and it hit a perfect 10 to win the shoot-off. So aiming off is not something that he's not used to. He is a field archer. He's, he's, he's very used to, to moving his sight across the... Um, across the target face against what I've said about the circles. But it doesn't mean it doesn't mean it's easy, especially not indoors when that face is, is so small. He's chasing it, he's getting there. I wouldn't see I wouldn't be surprised to see this arrow. If he executes it well, just go a little bit higher and nick the bottom of that of that white ring. He's going in the right direction. Uh, let's find out whether he can hit it. It's time for end number three. So is the hand going up? It isn't. Doesn't mean that Brady's not going to go for the 12 in this end. Because he's got the bottom two targets to shoot at first. And that one that might need to be photographed and sent to World Archery Headquarters in Lausanne for double checking and Brady raises his hand he's going to go for the 12 spot for the third end in a row third time lucky as Chris Wells predicted he's hit that one and uh, he's got his sights in I fancy Chris that uh, 
Brady Ellison used that first arrow in the bottom left target as a sighter just to make sure he was ready to shoot the 12. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. You see him just creeping up that face. I think it's his aiming point. He's shooting exceptionally well. The groups are all really, really tiny. Thomas Sherrill, that's nearly on the 10. They did the X-Pot as well. It's funny how close this match is, despite that 6 and 7 from Brady. Yeah, yeah. And they're not normal sixes and sevens. It's not him dropping the ball by any stretch of the imagination. It's when he's gone for the 12 spot. And look at it. you absolutely on the money. Uh, both uh, Ellison on the money and Chris with your prediction of him shooting so well. All these archers have their own unique processes they go through. And it's actually quite fascinating to have this angle of Thomas Chirot. Part of his process at the very beginning is uh, having his head bowed. And uh, what, Chris, is that sort of opening up the chest and the shoulders before lifting the bow? Is that part of his process? And, and we'll see that um, better with Lisa Barbalan, who's a left handed archer. She, she rolls her shoulder forward uh, with her head space forward. And, and that's what you see Thomas Chirul doing there, settling his core down straight above uh, the center and centering it over his base, his waist. Uh, it's really cool to see it from the front and back. So remember that image uh, when you get to the, um, the the next archer. They're taking another another look though at, at that first shot from from Thomas Chirou. If that's uh, upgraded to a ten, it'll it'll extend his advantage to a four uh, a three point advantage. Why maths is going down the train right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on the on the scores we've got called. Yeah, it's uh, 87 plays 85, but that hasn't been confirmed because, as you said, that bottom left target needs to be uh, looked at a little bit closer. And that would, to me, suggest that certainly uh, the Golden Arrow team think it has just clipped the line. Uh, so we will wait for confirmation of that. It does mean that we have a little bit of added tension to this match. As... Uh, they're now marked, and the agent will recover the arrows. What are your thoughts? That bottom arrow, I, I think it might well have clipped. Yeah, I think it has as well. What's, what's great about this is that I'm receiving all the photos, and I've got <laughs> so much ammunition for the in-and-out question on social media after this because we've had so many tight line cutters, and they, they really are on the edge. A fantastic job by the scorers appointed by each team to, to give the right photos, make sure they're, they're perpendicular, and you can really clearly see that, it, that it's in. Uh, and, and, you know... Fairness is a really important part of this when you're having uh, teams compete from, from different locations. Well, that score was confirmed. Three tens for Thomas Shiro and uh, the Golden Arrow lead by three points going into end number four. So Brady Ellison... leads us off going to that bottom left target again so if uh, it's true to form he'll be going for the 12 with his second shot here's that process that uh, Shiro goes through lifting up his head then up the shoulders and then the bow and shooting another 10 only dropped two points in this round as Brady Ellison raises the hand indicating that he's going for the 12 again and that looks to have clipped it as well so on for a potential 117 that means Shiro can't afford to drop any points here. Well, that keeps him on target for a, a maximum potential score of 118. Ellison back on the shooting line. Can he put some pressure on with another 10? Well, he has. So he's got 117 here, and uh, all of a sudden, this is not...
quite the cakewalk that you thought it might have been. Thomas Chirot has to shoot a 10 to take the bonus point. And he shot a nine. Now, look at that. Now, this, the, the, the thing here is that provisionally the scores are all tied here. But the major advantage, you have to say, has gone to Lancaster Archery Supply Team in California because Brady Ellison has got his eye in on the 12. Well, he's just hit two in a row. Yes, he missed low. Uh, with the first two, but but two in a row to, to finish off and, 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 and drive that match back to a tie. And what's more, he missed one really low, like into the six. You know, that's not necessary, uh, shooting at the level he did, especially on those other two spots. That could have easily been a seven, and then Thomas Sherrill would have been going in to his last arrow, needing a ten just to tie. So that really throws the logic we saw in those first uh, semi-finals on its head, doesn't it? Should we be shooting the 12 more often? Should it be a... Uh, a decision to wait until the last the last shot of each arrow. Granted, that is Brady Ellison. This is not any old archer we're, we're seeing here. Can someone else match him? But Thomas Sherrill's also hit the 12 in this one as well. Really, really interesting start to this final. Yeah, very interesting. And I, I think the major advantage has to go with uh, Brady Ellison and his team now because uh, they've, they've got their eye in. And despite shooting a 6 and a 7, uh, he's... Uh, he's come out of that with uh, shared bonus points between uh, him and uh, the Golden Archer. Amazing performance. You said you wanted brave and bold, and that's exactly what Brady Ellison has delivered. Right, I, I, maybe it's not, you know, the change from recurve to compound that, um, uh, you know, that, that's made the 12 just a, a little more of an afterthought. Maybe it's just the, the boldness of the archers. We, we had Arc System in, in the compound competition just driving the point home. That was it, 12, and they were going to go to it, and everybody else had to adjust um, Brady's shown that it is possible with a recurve as well. It's just a little harder, I think, to get the eye in. You saw him just climb up the target face, six, seven, then he hit it. And, and that's what got him back into this one and got the, got the, tied, uh, got the tied score. 117 apiece and one bonus point apiece after that first match. Yeah, first match done, Dusted, and I think you're right. And I think we might well see a, a repeat of that later on in the, in the team match. We'll have to see, won't we? We'll have to see uh, because uh, team, uh, they, sorry, yeah, match number one is done. So it's now time for match number two. Uh, two archers uh, ready on the shooting line. Uh, we start in California. And shooting for Team Lancaster, it's Casey Calfold. Another close one. Here in France, shooting for the Golden Arrow, it's Lisa Barbala. That one also on the line, but inside the 10 ring for sure. Both uh, provisionally marked as 10s as we go back to Casey Calfold. And you saw Calfold's marked up there after initially being called a 9. Difficult to tell. We'll still need a measure. Nothing confirmed until uh, the, uh, the scorers go down to the targets. That one needs no confirmation. They're definitely a 10. As Chris mentioned, we get a good look at the back of Lisa Barbalan as she goes through her process. Just pulling right a little bit, the height's all good. But that's gone into the nine. So provisionally marked as a perfect 30 for Casey Calfold. Watch that process again. The shoulders are down at the moment. Uh, everything comes up with a nice smooth roll. And pulled even further right, just clipping the 8-9 ring, so that will be a 9. Um, and it provisionally is a 28, plays 30. But Chris, I think one of Calfold's arrows is uh, going to need to have a, a, a little look and a confirmation, that bottom left one. 
They're very difficult to tell, as we've said all along. When the arrow lands the same, the same direction as the camera, uh, it, can, it can hide any, any, any results. So it doesn't matter where you put the camera, unless you have cameras from all directions, it can, it can always occur. Um, but confident start from Carford, who was really, really good in, in, in their semi-final game too, um, especially in the team match. She was, she was super consistent. Lisa Barbalan has been the star of, of the Indoor World Series uh, for many stages uh, this year. She won one of them as well with her in, in, uh, individual result. Both, both of those nines going right. And for a left-handed archer to go right, it, it's a bit strange. Normally when you collapse, you'd go left. So she's either pushing that too much or just not quite aiming steadily enough because, because she was good in her, in her opener. Mm, she was, I, mean, I think you're right. That, that's pr perhaps the aim. And that's, um, that's something that she can fix. She can make a difference. She can, she can change that. Um, but uh, there's uh, certainly some consternation going on here. We've got uh, no confirmation of the scores as yet. And the, uh, the arrows still remain in the, the targets uh, as uh, they're still being looked at. And it is that bottom left uh, arrow on the right-hand target. That's all the way over in California. It looks like uh, Lisa Barbaland's... Uh, arrows have all been marked and they are ready to be removed so uh, it's still a question mark over Casey Calfold. Uh, and I think that's going to be marked down to be honest Carrie. I mean, it's really really tight and it gets to the point where it's it's pretty you know on the edge to be calling it they're taking such a good look at it there because it's very very difficult to tell um, but you know best to analyze but uh, I think it's tough I think it's I think it's really tough yeah, I bet it's important that they get this right because uh, it's the difference between a, a one-point or a two-point margin after one end. And um, as we know, that brings the uh, 12 spot very much into play again. And, and quite frankly, uh, that's what we want to see. We want to see them going for for the 12 spot. Uh, but uh, this is a, a, a very long deliberation that's going on at the moment. Uh, Chris, what, what, uh, why, why would it take so long to do this? I mean, they're taking photographs and sending them to the uh, uh, confirmers. Look, they're taking photographs from all angles here. <laughs> um, surely once you get that photograph, you can see how, whether it's touching the line or not. Uh, it's, tough to, it's tough to call it when you're even there um, on, the, uh, on, on the field. Um, uh, when you're a judge, but hey, we're, we're, we're 10,000 miles away. I think it would be very tough for a judge to give that as a, as a 10. The, the rule is that it's got to break the line, not just bend the paper. And uh, looking at it from the side photo is really, really challenging to see that it's really broken the line. So uh, I'm interested to see what's going to happen. I, I think, I think it will probably be marked down to a 9. Yeah, well, they're definitely still taking their time. This one is not uh, agreed yet, and it's, sim it's not a simple one. And, and, and uh, I suppose... It's the simplest time for it to happen because you've got a completely clean target face. That's the first arrow to go into that target face. So it's, uh, it might make it a little easier. Absolutely. Um, it, it, it's much easier when, the, uh, when there's, no, um, there's no holes in, in the target because that can, that can obviously warp the face but also give an illusion. Here, here there's, no, um, there's, no, uh, there's no warping of the target face. But you know, there's there's been some zooming in. There's some real analysis of that of that line break, and, and it has been given as a ten. So thirty yeah. points for Lancaster. Wow, that that took a long time. That did take a long time, didn't it? And uh, like you say, Casey Calfold now gets a two-point lead. Uh, and the good news for us is that potentially that brings uh, the 12 spot into play a lot earlier in this second match. Uh, incredible, incredible debate over that one. It'll be interesting to hear how uh, they came to the decision. But it is a 10, and it is time for end number two. So... Here we are with Lisa Barbala and Golden Arrow. Well, still pulling right as she was in the first end. There's a long deliberation over Casey Calfold's 
first hour in that bottom left target was marked as a 10 and we just caught uh, Barmela just adjusting her sight there uh, Chris do you think she's adju adjusted that in between ends and decided to adjust it just a little bit more it's not really a sight issue she can fix though she was she was collapsing to the right or pushing it to the right um, so back in the middle with her second hour of, of this uh, of this second end though Yeah, so the correction's made a 29 for Lisa Barbant. Casey Calfold on for a second maximum. But she sneaks it into the nine as well. A little bit easier to judge at that one. You can see a clear yellow between the arrow and the 10 ring. So for me, that's 29 plays 29, uh, which means that Calvold still holds that uh, two-point lead. So some adjustment there from Barbara Chris? Well, I, I don't think there's an adjustment too much in, in where she's placing. I think she just has, has a more confident release, a more confident uh, uh, execution. I love how she sets up the shot. I love how stable both her and Thomas Shaw, very, very similar techniques, even if the kind of main action doesn't really uh, mirror each other. It's the setup and, and the pre-shot routine are almost identical. Um, I, I think she's just delivering better. She's, she's two points behind, six hours left to go in this. She's got plenty of time uh, to claw her way back. Yeah, and uh, the 12 ring still coming into play, uh, or still has to, uh, can come into play, of course. Uh, as uh, someone's someone's happy, uh, I wonder which end of the of the line that is. Is that France or the USA? We'll we'll have to find out. Uh, but uh, yeah, it does mean that that uh, twelve ring is uh, is likely to come into play, doesn't it? Absolutely. I think uh, Lisa Barbalone's in a situation where two points down. Uh, you might consider it in this third one. Uh, if you're Brady Ellison, you've already shot it two twice uh, twice in this final. Uh, but uh, given how the the first semis went and how we know this French team's approaching it, I would say she'll wait to the last moment. She just shouldn't do what Baita did. Baita did in their semi-final. They just ran out of time. They were too far back, and, and the 12 ring couldn't help them, even if they hit it. Yeah, they can't leave it too late. Uh, but she's corrected uh, uh, the, the shots being pulled to the right, so she's moving in the right direction. But you've got to take your hats off to uh, Casey Calfold, who has uh, Scott just dropped a single point in this, this match, but shooting very well. Yeah, a phenomenal start again from the, from this young archer, 16 years old now. Um, she she's proven that she can she can run with the best on, on the U.S. team uh, with the, the medals that she's won already, and and not no longer like the the third member, the second member, the newbie. She she's probably the best archer that the U.S. has on the on the women's side right now to match up with with Brady and uh, and Jack. So yeah, fantastic showing off her, her talent here today. Oh, praise uh, the very highest order there from Chris Wells uh, ahead of end number three. So Lisa Babala in France, just going through that little routine, the little shake of the hips, the shake of the left hand, and then into the draw. And in to the 10 ring. It's a lovely shot from Calfold. Best one so far from her.
They've both got into their rhythm here. I was particularly impressed with the smoothness of Barbaland's second shot. Can she repeat that again here? No call for the 12, so on for a perfect regulation, perfect 30. Clear 30 for Casey Calfold as well. So the two archers matching each other in the last two ends. Uh, Chris, particularly impressed with now the not just the speed, but the smoothness both of these archers are uh, drawing and releasing their arrows and obviously uh, hitting the center three times each. Yeah, and and Lisa Barbalan has really settled down. It's not just that she's scoring 10. It's that she's tightened that, that kind of push of impact. It's very difficult to see groups over, over three different faces. And uh, there are other variables, like we said, the slightly changing in, in angles when you're aiming at the different spots. But also the arrow holes in the target. You know, we say that the circles kind of drag you into the middle, but um, any kind of dirtiness in the face, which is caused by the arrow holes, the black spots, they can also drag your vision a little bit off sensor as well. And, and it's kind of like a magnet, right? Once, you, once you've got a hole in there, um, more and more arrows kind of tend towards that hole. It's actually why we see arrows impacting in the same place, uh, especially with compound artists who are magnified in and, and zoomed in. But um, uh, Lisa Barblin's, despite those few odds to the right are, are in the first end and, and one in the second, she's really dragged them all into the middle now and still only finds herself two points behind in this third end, um, going into this fourth end, sorry. And that's winnable. Yeah, very much so. It's very winnable. We've got we've got confirmation of the scores uh, uh, from that third end, 30 apiece for both of them. Uh, let's see how this one plays out. It's time for end number four. So we'll start with Lisa Barbalant. No call for the 12 just yet, but we suspect it may come into play if there's still a points difference when they get to the third arrow. Hmm, now that has gone left. It's very, very close. Provisionally marked as a 10. Now that one looks like it may have gone out. It's another one just below, just in the wrong angle to call from here. I think that one's more likely to be a 9. Just looks like the extra, extra hair's width, extra millimeter. It, it doesn't need to be out of the ten ring. That changes mm. things in this match. Mm, it certainly does. Just a slightly longer hold there from Lisa Barbala, and that one. Well, that looks like it's a nine as well. So potentially things could be cancelled out here with a ten from Casey Calfold. And that's just what it is. So will Lisa Barbalan call for the 12 spot here? She's got to. She does <laughs> indeed. She took her time. She thought about it. Back to process. Shake of the hips, shake of the left hand. Oh, that is very close, but she has definitely missed it. And that is a seven to finish off. But it's given her a bit of a sighter. And Casey Calfold now just has to hit the target. And she will take the bonus points. And finishes with a beauty there. Uh, a 29 overall provisionally from uh, Casey Calfold. Of course, that could be marked up if that first arrow is marked up. Uh, to a 10 from a 9, but uh, a wide margin provisionally between these two because Lisa Barbalan had to go for the 12 spot. And you can see top left target, just how close she got to it. Chris, it was always going to come into play. Uh, I think even Lisa Barbalan forgot she had to raise her hand, but eventually did. And that's not too far away. 
No, that was very close. She had a chance to take that one uh, or, or at least push it to a tie. But, but Casey Kalfar defending her lead well. That first arrow might be on the line, might be out. It won't make any difference ultimately. But very difficult to make these decisions when you just don't quite know if these arrows have broken the line or not. It, it's not like they're shooting in the same arena, right? Like uh, normal heads-to-heads. Yes, okay, you've got the, you've got the results uh, on the scoreboard. But you can also just take a look at the other person's target. They're looking at the same view that we've got. So they've got to make their decisions based on the spotter, but they're also their own, uh, their own intuition of taking another really good look at this one. It's, it's pretty much identical to the previous. Could be in, could be out. Super tough. Um, I don't envy the, uh, the decision maker we've got in, uh, in Lausanne. No, that is exceptionally close. And they, they are taking their time. I mean, uh, is it a matter of pride? Because, I mean, it doesn't matter whether that's a 9 or a 10, does it? The, the Calfold still, still won it and she's still got the bonus point for her team. Of course, it's a matter of pride. The goal in archery is to, is to hit the middle. And I think that's the, the, most, the, the biggest principle, uh, hit, hit the middle of the, of the target. But, but if you shoot a 10, um, the, the, the 10 is, uh, is important, you know, like it's the top score you can get. It's been called a 9. It's been confirmed as a 9. It's so close. Uh, so much fun, this. Yeah, it is great. Uh, so, yes, as you said, it's, it has been confirmed as a 9. So, 118 plays 113 uh, win for Casey Calfold of Team Lancaster. So a bonus point to them, just a one bonus point now uh, for uh, the Golden Arrow from the first match and uh, two for the team from Lancaster in California. In fact, here it is. Here are the scores so far. So a fairly big margin, but don't let that put you off too much. Lisa Barbara still shot very, very well, but forced to go for the 12 in the final end with the final arrow. And that's why the gap was so big so two out of the three individuals done and uh, Lancaster lead the bonus points by two points to one uh, we've got another cracker coming up and uh, a man using uh, well uh, shaft the shaft of uh, Jack Williams arrow is much bigger than the other ones we're seeing uh, first off Chris why is that well, the regulation maximum in world archery competition is 9.3 millimeters. That's how big, how wide the, the, the diameter of the shaft can be. All of the other recurve archers we've seen today, apart from one on the biter team, has chosen to use the thin outdoor arrows. Um, normally, it doesn't really make all that much difference indoors, in my personal opinion. I don't really think uh, the line cutters make all that much difference on the 10 ring. But with the 12 ring, when, when such a, a small variance can cause you to miss, I, I do think it plays... Uh, into the fatter shaft hands. So, so Jack Williams, definitely, I think, going to be, again, well, I say definitely, the designated 12 hitter in, in the Lancaster team. But then we've seen Brady Ellison sight in and, and shoot two of four and just climb up their face. So, so maybe things will change. Anyway, we'll see if he's got his eye in on it uh, in this third individual match. Yeah, let's find out. It's time for match number three. So very intriguing, uh, Jack Williams here shooting for Lancaster Archery Supply. And you can clearly see the fatter arrow there. And uh, even with the fat arrow, I think that's going to be a nine. Got his eye in there. So choosing not to go for the twelve in this first end. Settles for a 29, but Clement Jacquet is on for a perfect 30. And 
a solid start. Uh, all of them strangely in almost exactly the same place in the target in terms of height above the spider, Chris, uh, from Clement Jacquet. Is that an indication that he is, well, on a fine form? That's fantastic, isn't it? I mean, they're on three different spots, but they're almost the same arrow hole. Uh, and it's kind of the perfect uh, spot as well. Uh, yeah, it's not the dead center of the target, but if you are going to aim that little white dot, having your arrow land high is much better than having your arrow land low. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't move a thing if I was Clement Jacquet. He's dialed in and he's hitting in the right place. Uh, in his first match, Clement was, was kind of all over the place. He dropped um, seven, seven points in his, his semi-final individual match. Very different archer we're seeing on the, on the field of play here. Three tens to start and three excellent tens as well. Yeah, if he carries, I mean, I get your point about shooting just a little bit higher and it being of benefit for if he needs to go for the 12 ring. But if he carries on shooting like this, he's not going to need the 12 ring because he's going to get a perfect score. I mean, really impressive start uh, from the Frenchman. Uh, not bad from Jack Williams just dropping that first arrow, that sighter into the nines. Uh, let's see how things continue. It's time for end number two. Jack Williams may have heard us talking about how well this man is shooting because he's just hit the X in the middle of the target. And the form looks like it's continuing for Jacquet. Another one dropped low. That shaft might have carried it into the bottom of the Tim ring, though. Jack Williams really coming into his own for the USA over the past couple of years. Phenomenal compliment to Brady Ellison. They do need a third still, a reliable third. This is really quite something from Clement Jacquet as Jack Williams lifts the peak of his cap, raises his hand to indicate that he's going for the 12. And he's hit the 12. That's definitely clipped inside that white dot. Uh, now, currently, He's marked for a 32 in this end, so uh, uh, 9 that I thought was a second error has been marked provisionally as a 10. And Clement Jacquet sticking with his routine, uh, shooting at the 10s and gets another perfect 30. Uh, but despite that perfect 30, and despite going into the second end leading by one, because Jack Williams has hit the 12 ring, Team Lancaster are in the lead by one point. Now, this is all subject to confirmation again of the scores. Now, Chris, that second arrow from Jack Williams' uh, left-hand target that we're looking at here, bottom right side, you think that's clipped the line? Well, I, I could tell from here. And, uh, my, line cutters, uh, my, my, my line cutter predictions have been terrible so far. I thought that earlier one was going to be called out. We're not taking a long look at it, but, but that, top, that top shot was absolutely fantastic. This is how... I thought the 12 would be used a bit more often. Jack Williams taking a commanding, uh, a commanding, you know, uh, approach before the midway point of this match, not letting the match get away from him, and it's paid off with that confirmation. Bottom arrow is a 10, and instead of trailing because of that nine in the first end, he leads by a single point. And Clement Jacquet shot nothing but tens. And I can't see him changing that. He's shooting so well. He's, I think he's going to back himself to, to win this with 10s. But he's up against Jack Williams, who's, um, who's doing just what you said, being bold and brave and going for the 12. Uh, Team Lancaster lead uh, just by a single point as we go into end number three.
So Clement Jacquet trailing. We'll shoot first. Well, that's the first time we've seen Jacquet pull one lower than the centre of the target. And he's gone into the nine as well. But that's also a nine. I don't care how thick his shaft is, that's not going to be on the ten ring for me. Well, having shot so well through the first two ends, that's two nines for the French archer. And that one has gone way left. It's still in the nine. Jacquet just composing himself. Ends up as three nines, and all of a sudden, what was looking like fabulous form from the Frenchman as uh, well. I mean, it's not bad at 27, uh, but having I mean, shot six tens in a row before that, he's a drop in form as Jack Williams scores a 28, and that is enough to increase the lead provisionally by another point from. 61-60 going in to 89-87 coming out of the third end. Uh, Chris, uh, first off, um, both of the archers have had a, a little dip in form. Yeah, after Jack got that great shot on the 12, two nines to start off this uh, this third end. Tony Jacquet didn't miss the 10 until, until these, this volley, and he's got three nines. And I, I, I do think it, it's something to do with, with that 12 ring, you know. It changed the dynamic of this match. Clement Jacquet was all tens and was losing uh, at the halfway point. And it's really about taking command and dictating how you want this to go. A uh, two-point lead now for Jack Williams. That's a much safer place to be than a one-point lead. But every arrow he drops out of the middle is going to you know, make it a bit more of a precarious position as we as we edge towards the end of these individual contests. Yeah, it's uh, quite phenomenal the effect that, that that shooting that 112 that Jack Williams did in the at the end of the second end has had on Clement Jacquet's uh, form. But it's also had an effect on his form. He's dipped as well. Is that is that because he went for the 12? It's altered his his aim or or is it just uh, the mystery of the third end again? Mr. It seems to be the third end that, that decides it positive or negative uh, as, as we've gone through this one, doesn't it? Uh, I don't know. I mean, they're not that bad shots. One just a bit left, no. one just a bit right. It's, they're, not, they're not a hugely issue. Um, any, any, little, any little wobble could have caused it, but I, I'm sure we'll be back in the middle for end number four. Well, let's find out. It's time to see out this third match, and it's time for end number four. So trailing by two points, it's been confirmed. Uh, there we have on the screen 89 for Team Lancaster, 87 for Clement Jacquet and the Golden Arrow. Back in the center. And that's what Clement Jacquet has to do. Just put a bit of pressure on Jack Williams by hitting his tens. Solid from Jacques again. Oh, 
Uh, that one uh, needs a measure and, and uh, picks up on a discussion that Chris and I had earlier about going into holes that were already in the target. Uh, Clement Jacquet calling for the 12. He needs it. He's on for a maximum of 117 without it, on for a 119 if he hits it. Oh, he's gone very low, a very quick shot as well, and that's into the six. And uh, now uh, this is looking a lot easier. Uh, but Jack Williams decides to go for it. Now, he doesn't need to do this. He can just go for his regular shot here, but he's going for the 12 as well. Bit of practice, and uh, it was worthwhile, I suppose. Even if he dropped into the six, he was still going to take the bonus points. And now he's got his second 12 of the match. Uh, we will, of course, wait for confirmation, but the gap is so huge. It doesn't matter if uh, any of those arrows are changed in score by a single point. 121 plays 113 provisionally. Uh, well, it all came down to that uh, final arrow again, Chris. And this time it was Clement Jacquet that had to make the call and go for it. But again, it's the same thing we've seen before. And Clement Jacquet waiting till his last arrow for going for that 12. Uh, it was in that position because Jack Williams was bolder early on, bolder before the halfway point. Uh, chose to go for the 12 early, hit it, and, and then took command of the match. Another 12 at the end, 100% on that little white dot in, in this final uh, so far. We'll see if he's called upon or Brady, who was, you know, two for four, 50% on the little white dot. To, to shoot that for the team uh, when we decide things in, in the next pit. Yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it? I mean, I think that in some respects, uh, Clément Jacquet can walk away from that very happy with his first six arrows, very happy that he's had a, a chance of a, a shot at the 12 uh, to prepare him for potentially going for it in the team match. But overall, you've got a fancy team Lancaster, haven't you now? The form as you look at all three archers. I mean, Lancaster are looking a lot stronger right now. If you look at the total scores, obviously, it's, um, uh, it, it's kind of balanced, but that's because um, Brady went for the 7 and the 6 a couple of times. Oh, sorry, went for the 12 and hit a 7 and a 6 a couple of times in, the, uh, in his individual match. But, but the two 12s from him, the two 12s from Jack to close out their matches, you know, they're going into this final as soon as we have confirmation, likely with a two-point advantage already. And there is the confirmation. So 3-1 will be the starting score in the final. And, it, and it's because of that boldness, because of that aggression, that, that, that they're in that spot. Yeah, I think you're right. And uh, as you say, the confirmation, the uh, massive chasm in scores there at the end there, uh, mainly because Jack Williams went for the 12 at the end. A 121-113 means that uh, Lancaster have collected three bonus points to one going in two. Uh, the team match and it's all important team match a two point swing is uh, perhaps a, it feels a little bigger in recurve archery compared to compound archery but it's certainly not insurmountable um, but the question now is how long do the golden arrow leave it before trying to close that gap up yeah and how aggressive do, do the um, uh, the Lancaster team go in, in trying to build a, an even bigger lead at the start you know if they if they, they've got a two-point lead, uh, normally we start scores at 0-0. Zero, zero. If they aim at the top of that 12 ring, the worst they're going to get is likely an 8, which will put them back to level again. Would you not want to build a big lead early and just snowball it? I mean, it's difficult to say. You know, that, that there's a swing of 1,000 Swiss francs, more than 1,000 Swiss francs on this final. There's the champion title. Lancaster are the defending champions. Um, it'll be... Uh, It'll be the, the French team, it'll be the Golden Arrow that starts first in this match as they're trailing just one bonus point to, to, the, uh, to the Lancaster three. But yeah, I'm really excited to see what the, what the kind of story of this, this final is. Well, good job because there's no, uh, no more time to wait. It's time for the team match. Well, here we go, as uh, Chris said, Trailing by three points to one going into this all-important team final. It's the Golden Arrow to shoot first and Thomas Chirol. On the 9-10 line, but will get marked as a 10. Brady Ellison to shoot first. Choosing not to be bold and brave and snowball 
Team Lancaster's score. Just nice and simple when going for the 10 and keeping the two point lead. So Clement Jacquet in the number two spot currently for the Golden Arrow. And back in the center of the target. Cast is number two, Casey Calfold. Sabarbala also looking like she's got into the 10 ring so provisionally a 30 for the golden arrow and no sign of an attempt at the 12 from Jack Williams who shoots the third arrow for Lancaster great start from both teams three tens all looking fairly solid uh, but that means that uh, Lancaster Archery maintain their two-point lead. And now there are just three ends to go. But, Chris, impressive shooting from all six archers there, all in the ten ring. Yeah, it was a different rotation, obviously, to our normal team matches. One, 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 one alternating between, uh, between archers, between teams. Um, all shooting incredible arrows to, to, to kick off this final. It's the bonus points that have made the difference so far. Those three, uh, three bonus points for Lancaster, one bonus point for the French team, the Golden Arrow, 33-31. Such an unusual score to have uh, one end into a, into a match of any kind. So it doesn't really roll off the tongue. Uh, but yeah, really, really, really impressive. Uh, I like how you said in that, in that end uh, that it was easy. You know, going for the easy option, the 10, carry about that. I mean, these archers make it look easy, but 10's, 10's not easy. And, and they shot six of them right there. Yeah, no, four uh, centimetre diameter ring at 18 metres it is definitely not easy. But it's easier than going for the 15 mil uh, 12 spot, that's for sure. Um, so it looks like we're ready to go again. It's time for end number two. Solid from Thomas Chirel. Brady Ellison on the shooting line. Still no sign of them trying to increase their lead by shooting the 12. And perhaps Ellison is going to be sticking down with that bottom left target. Well, that's just pulled left and into the nine. So an opportunity here for Calfold to build the lead. Well, has that clipped the line, Chris? Yeah, that looks like it's caught it. Maintaining a, a perfect record so far. Clement J.K. has an option to go for the 12, but it looks like he's sticking with the 10 despite current three-point deficit yeah and of course the French changed their order as well with Barbalan shooting second and she shot third in the first and Jack Williams maintains his anchor position for team Lancaster and maintains the perfect record for them. Uh, we are now, well, normally we'd be at 60 plays 59, but because of the bonus points, uh, it's provisionally 63 plays 60. Uh, ominous signs from the team in California, Chris. A fantastic shooting, just drilling those tens, relying on those little mistakes from, 
from the French squad and they've built a three point lead now and, and that's really, really important because even if the French go for the, go for the 12 ring, the golden arrow, and they hit a 12 ring, they're still going to be a point behind um, due to that three point uh, a mountain that, that they've built up. So I'd be interested to see if, uh, if uh, the, uh, the, the, the team uh, in the US, the, the Lancaster team, even bother looking at the 12 ring as an option at this point. They were so bold in the early matches and that's given them enough of a lead in this one with the tens that it's probably not necessary. There are different ways to approach this. Games within games, it's really what we wanted to achieve with this, this unusual format and it, and it looks like it's paying off. Yeah, it really is. It's very, very interesting indeed. But uh, it's the team in Lancaster who have got a bit of a security buffer as we head in to end number three. So Tom Shuro shooting first again, and the French have changed their order from the first end of this team match. But uh, always been led out by this man, and that's why three tens from him in this team match. Brady Ellison leading the way for Lancaster. And the first drop points for that team. Uh, he's in the nine. And now we go back to Lisa Barbalant, who's shooting second for the second time. And she's put it into the ten ring. They're having a think about it. Clément Jacquet, he puts his hand up and he's going for it. So this to level things up, potentially. Well, he's gone high and that's gone into the eight as a result. It's not quite uh, one that we're going to challenge her for a 12 pointer, uh, but he had to take that risk and they finish with a 28 in end three. Big opportunity to open this up now. Sticking with the tens for Jack Williams. And uh, a 29 in that end, and the score now looks very tricky indeed for the Golden Arrow. It's 92, plays 88 provisionally as we wait for uh, confirmation. Chris, uh, they had to go for the 12, uh, and they, they, they gambled a bit as well because, uh, you know, they, they, they went high on it deliberately so that you get an 8 instead of a 7, but uh, has it now put the match completely out of reach. I don't think it was the wrong decision. We said if you wait too long to take your chance, you never know what might happen there with only a two point deficit and only four arrows left to shoot. Clement Jacquet went for it and was very, very close. At the end of the day, there are still three arrows left to shoot. We don't know what's gonna happen, but you know, it's really looking like uh, Lancaster are gonna come home with this. Maybe even a procession uh, for, for Jack Williams uh, on the last shot, we'll, we'll see. I don't think it was the wrong decision. I don't think it was the wrong decision no. not to wait until the very last moment. No, I don't think there have been uh, any mistakes throughout this for either team. It's just been a slightly stronger performance from Lancaster. Uh, it's time for end number four. So this to decide this year's Indoor World Series team champions and another change in the order for the golden arrow, Lisa Barbalan to shoot first. Another one clipping the line. Provisionally, that will be marked as a 10, I would have thought. Back in the center for Brady Ellison. 
Clément Jacquet going in position number two in this final end. No call for the 12. Going for the 10 and hitting a nine. So back to Casey Carfold. Team Lancaster have stuck with the same order throughout this final. And another beautiful shot from Casey Carfold. All tens for her in the final. And of course, Thomas Shiro going for the 12. So 119 is now their potential maximum score. And gone high again, and well, that could be a nine, actually. That could get marked up to a nine. It looks very close to the eight, nine ring. So uh, 116 for them, and uh, well, a procession is what Chris Wells called this. Jack Williams to take Lancaster over the line and finishing with a 10. A quite brilliant performance from Lancaster. Jack Williams, Casey Cowfold and Brady Ellison have taken the Indoor World Series Team Championships of 2021. Yeah, and what a fantastic performance from that Lancaster team. They built it with boldness in the individual matches, had a two-point advantage going in uh, to the team, uh, uh, the team match, and then, and then just shot tens, just shot a lot of tens. Only one nine from Brady Ellison. Really uh, fantastic job uh, in that last hour. Jack Williams couldn't wait to get to the line and draw his bow up and just bank it, couldn't he? They would, could have gone for the 12, but, but, but no, no gusto. We'll get a reaction from, uh, from Lancaster first, and then we'll come to the French group afterwards. Uh, Jack, Brady, Casey, congratulations. Uh, great win. Thank you. Thank you. Where are we going? Yeah, we'll yeah. see. <laughs> so you can yeah. yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you. It was quite fun today, and this format's quite entertaining, I feel like. And I like the 12, and I love accumulative scoring. I just think that that should be the way it should be. And why don't we put a 12 on our feet of faces in the same spot and we'll see what happens. Uh, well, you, you were bold in the individual matches and you built that, that little bonus point lead. Was that the plan coming into this final? Yeah, that was definitely, you know, right out the lead and just space. I think we can all pretty much hit a 10, so it's more comfortable to just hit 10s the whole time instead of go for 12. Yeah, Brady, you were very different in your, in your first match to your second. You went, you went for the 12, hitting it about 50% of the time. Well, exactly 50% of the time in your individual. Was that, is that what you'd expect to hit, that, side, that size of uh, dots? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's tough. Like, that dot's small. Um, you know, it just depends on the days that you're shooting good. Um, when I've been practicing, I would say that I would be 80% on it. And then on the days that you're bad, you're like 10 um, you know, so there's a lot of room there where you get to attend every single shot and never touch it. Um, so it was just one of those things that um, we knew with, with three points, even if we lost all three matches with three points, if we got comfortable shooting at it in the tournament setting and hit a couple, you're right back in it. And then if you start hitting in the individual matches, then you're ahead and you don't have to go for it unnecessarily and force the other team to make that choice. Uh, and luckily, it just came down to the second. Absolutely. Definitely an element of strategy in this one. And Casey, you were fantastic, especially in that last match uh, of some tens. You, you, you won this uh, event as, the, uh, uh, as Lancaster last year, just on the results of the events. Now in this head-to-head -head format, uh, what's it like to shoot with these two fantastic archers next to you? Uh, how does it feel to be repeat champions? Yeah, even though we shot like the technical like team event, like it's cool to shoot actually like in a team and like do the rotation and um, hype, each, uh, hype each other up and I think it was a lot of fun. And hopefully, even though this was for us, that's the year. Wow, congratulations yeah. again, guys. Well we done on the win. Not these. We are well, too long. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank so you. Much. Well, congratulations to Team Lancaster. They did a fantastic job. Uh, and I think it's a, a bunch of bananas that Casey Calfold has got as her lucky charm or hanging off her, uh, 
her shoulder strap. Uh, maybe that helped her along the way. Um, now, Chris, I wonder if uh, our French Golden Arrow team is still around. We can see if we can get a word with them. Uh, yes, they are. Uh, congratulations uh, to you. Well done for making the finals. It was uh, it was a pretty big <laughs> ask when you were going in three one down against such a strong team. Yeah, it's it was really difficult, but we want to congratulate uh, Lancaster's team because they shot very good. They tried a lot of time the, to shoot the 12, and congrats for that because it's not uh, an easy, an easy, um, uh, an easy game. And yeah, it was. After all, a very good match, and we took a lot of experience for for our next competitions. And thank you for thank you for. All. Thank you, thank you for taking part. And uh, Clement, you uh, you chose to shoot that um, that twelve in the third end rather than the fourth end of the final. That uh, I, I still think it's a good decision. You know, you didn't let it go too out of. Uh, Two out of way for you. Are you happy you made that decision? Yeah, we we needed to 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 shoot two po two points more because of the the results of the individual matches. So we had to to take the risk to 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 try the twelve ring uh, twice at the end of the match. It was our only solutions to. To win the match uh, or to tie it and and try the shoot off like the the semi final, it will be fun. But <laughs> we we missed it because it's very very difficult to to shoot the the twelve ring. No, well, congratulations! Well done for second place. Fantastic performance here today. So so thanks thanks very much. Yeah, brilliant performance indeed. And as I said earlier on, a uh, promising future for the French uh, recurvers because they they. they they're very young, that team, and they look very solid. Yeah, hugely. Um, Lisa Barbalan and, and um, Clement Jacquet shot together at the World Youth Championships in 2019 in the finals field as a mixed team. Thomas Chirou, a couple of years older, he, he's kind of uh, coming in to replace almost uh, Jean-Charles Valadon as the top member of the, the, uh, the French team, although uh, Jean-Charles Valadon, of course, a silver medalist at the, at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games, not, not by any means past it, still a powerful force. Uh, Chirol just looking to take that top spot, obviously. Uh, hugely hugely um, important, but the same in the U.S. as well. Lancaster team, all, all members of the U.S. squad. Casey Calfold and Jack Williams keeping up and even besting uh, Brady, obviously, world number one and world champion um, in, in, in that final, uh, th those, those four arrows each of that final. So, yeah, really tight final. Lots of strategy, different approaches from the semifinals to the finals. But at the end of the day, yet again, a little bit of aggression pays off when you can hit that 12 ring. Uh, Lancaster yeah. riding those three bonus points uh, to the win with, uh, with 122 to 116. Yeah, well, there we have a uh, final confirmation of all the scores. A, tr a really tremendous first uh, leg between Ellison and Shiro showing up. Uh, how going for it, being brave and bold, uh, was Ellison's way forward. A strong performance from uh, Casey Calfold to take the second match, uh, followed up by her teammate Jack Williams. And as Chris said, that took them 3-1 into the team match, and they ran away with it at the end. Back-to-back -back winners of the Indoor Archery World Series uh, Lancaster Archery Supply. Well, Chris, uh, as always, uh, thank you very much to you. It's been uh, tremendous to watch this uh, new format and talk about it. Uh, can't wait to see more of it. And thanks to all of you. Join us again soon.